Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. Today, I would like to talk about a really, really beautiful application um, of algebra methods and graph theory. I want to count paths. And I would like to do it with matrices, or uh, as I already write here, with powers of matrices. So again, let's repeat that. And the whole point about algebraic graph theory is to kind of find linear algebra or algebra methods to do a graph theoretical problems and an obvious graph theoretical problems would be to count paths. And there's really a strikingly beautiful answer. So stay with me here. Um, we need to get something like seven minutes to get there. Um, but anyway, it will be quite beautiful. So a pass in a graph is really, really simple. And I'm staying here with graphs again. So, but that doesn't really matter. I could do all the other ones as well, directed graphs or uh, multigraphs or whatever. I just stay with graphs for simplicity. So a pass in a graph is exactly what you think it is. It's a collection of vertices such that if you move along, um, you just trail out a pass. That's why it's called a pass. So you move, 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 and you trail out a pass. The only uh, kind of confusing thing here is that the I don't move is also a pass. So if you just stand at G and you don't move at all, that counts as a pass. And that pass has length zero. So the length of the pass is the number of involved edges. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six. This has uh, length uh, six because there are six involved edges. So really it's just a collection of edges forming a trail. That's why it's called a pass. It's really just like you're an ant sitting on, well, we can scale everything. You're just sitting on uh, the graph and you like to walk around and whatever you walk around on the graph counts as a pass as long as you end on a vertex, right? You don't, don't end on the middle of an edge, just end on the vertex. And to kind of pass is just uh, some part of a graph or some property of a graph having paths um, that is just really important. It's just part of being a graph is the connectivity between the vertices and the path is essentially a measurement of the connectivity between the vertices. So counting paths must be an important problem in graph theory and it definitely is. And we want to do that in a smart way instead of just, well, just doing it at kind of a brute force count. And it's not so obvious to me, actually, well, I know the answer, but from the outset, it's not so obvious to me how that should work, right? So how do you count paths very smartly? And the first way to kind of attack this problem is to do many examples. So we start with a nice little example. It really looks um, a little bit like a toy example, but we'll see that in a second. Just a reminder, the adjacency matrix should somehow know the path. So remember adjacency matrix. So here one is connected to two and five. So I put the corresponding um, entries here. So the adjacency matrix, let me just call it A instead of A of G um, or the first power of A if you want. It seems to, or it counts by definition, right? So it counts by definition pass of length one. That's essentially the definition of uh, the adjacency matrix because it counts uh, it's kind of edges between vertices. So this is saying here, uh, this column is saying that when I start at one, there are exactly two paths of length one. One of them goes to uh, two and one of them goes to five. That's exactly what the first column is saying. Starting at one, there are exactly two paths. And these are just the entries. And I can even tell kind of there's exactly one pass to two and there's exactly one pass to five and there's no pass to six of length one, right? So pass of length one here are really just in the adjacency matrix itself. And we might ask the question, in what sense does the matrix now encode kind of all paths? Well, there's another observation. If you just take A to the zero, then this is just the identity matrix. Uh, so it's just one all the way down, down the diagonal. And these are the, exactly the, I stand here, I don't move, pass of length zero, because that's what it is. So there's exactly one pass of length zero at vertex one, and it's uh, I stand here and don't move. Right? So A to the zero encodes pass of length zero, A to the one encodes pass of length one. So we might guess Oh, maybe a little bit too much of a guess right now, but we'll see, of course, that uh, that is true. Oh, God, that was a spoiler. Um, now we can quit the video. Anyway, that the matrix powers uh, kind of count the number of paths of lengths matrix power. 
So to convince you that this is true, let's just look at a really, really simple example. I take the path graphs, the line graphs, whatever you want to call them. So just one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and just arrange the line. And let's say we take uh, the adjacency matrix of one, two, three, and it should look like this. Why is that? Well, one is connected to two, uh, two is connected to one and three, and three is connected to one. So this is my little adjacency matrix here. And then I just took powers of that matrix and that's just the matrix calculation. You uh, can believe me that I haven't messed up because obviously I did that with a machine. I was too lazy to compute the power of a one by one matrix, uh, of a three by three matrix, but a machine certainly can do that easily. And as you can see now, it gets very interesting. Um, so what are the paths of length two that start at one? That should be this column. Well, it says there's exactly one path of length two, which goes from one to one. And there's exactly one path of length three, which goes from uh, two, which goes from one to three. The one to three path is of course, not very hard to see. And the one to two path is also not so hard to find. The one to one path is also not so hard to find. It just go to two and come back. So the count actually works. And there are two paths uh, starting at two and ending at two. And this is this pass and this pass. That is this number here, no other pass, and so on. And the third power counts the length three pass. So um, in this case, the observation is just that really the powers of the adjacency matrix count paths. Turns out that this toy example is a prototypical example. And for any graph, the paths from A to B of length K are just, just the A to B entry of A to the K. And it's an amazing result because you essentially it's completely algebraic. You just need to compute the matrix power and you're done instead of doing some combinatorial mental yoga in your head. It's really, really simple. It's absolutely beautiful. So paths from A to B of length K are the A, B entry of A to the K. And that, that just really linear algebra counts paths. Computing matrix powers is not so hard. And actually I show you a cool trick how to not compute matrix powers in the next video and still count paths in some sense at least. But anyway, so this is really just, just linear algebra. And the linear algebra you do uh, avoid um, some mental counting, which might not be uh, really easy. And as I said, the same works for all types of graphs. So here's a multigraph, for example, um, for L equals two. So I have my zero vertex here. I have my one vertex here, I have my two vertex here, and I go all the way around in the cycle. Uh, so the matrix is this matrix. And if you square it and you square it again, you get the identity. And of course, there are just only uh, trivial paths of length three that just go around, like in the vertex. And it's really the same story. It doesn't matter whether it's a graph or a multigraph or a directed multigraph or a directed graph or whatever. It's really just linear algebra. Um, determines a problem, which is ridiculously beautiful. It's really, really so beautiful. And that's, again, uh, one of the beauty of the subject. It's just it, sometimes you have so ridiculously simple solution for seemingly hard problems. It's just it's just mind blowing. So I really love this here. It's really mind blowing. It's really, really simple, really, really simple. Anyway, um, so you might argue that computing matrix powers might be a little bit tricky. So the first matrix power is not so bad uh, here again for the same example as before, but the 99th matrix power, uh, a little bit unclear. It's a little bit unclear, but there's a fun trick. So we kind of, um, I'm going to go into details in the next video. We kind of can study the long-term behavior essentially without work. So the only thing we need to compute is the biggest eigenvalue. And the largest eigenvalue here is usually called PF eigenvalue anyway of the matrix itself. So you, just an eigenvalue problem of a matrix. And in this case, for example, you see that the eigenvalue is square root of two. Okay, happens here, eigenvalue of the matrix is square root of two. In what sense is it helpful? Well, in the following sense, the 99th power or in general kind of very high power um, is essentially of the order, the nth power of the eigenvalue itself. So if I had to do that and here I just divide it by this value, I essentially get one. Uh, so it's zero, 0 0.7, that's that's good enough. 0 0.71, let's say. That's, that's good enough to be close to one. So essentially the number of paths, the number of paths of lengths one million is determined by one number and it's one millionth power, which is 
uh, kind of a really r ridiculously beautiful statement. Again, you kind of avoid the count. You don't even need to compute matrix powers. You get a slightly weaker statement. We'll have some a very precise statement in the next video. But essentially, you can kind of uh, up to some um, statistical nonsense. You can kind of know you kind of know the the number of paths in the graph. Okay, so the whole point of us write graph theory is to find algebra methods to do graph theory. And this is just a really, the counting path is just a really beautiful example. And it even, gets even better in the next video where I explain this idea that you don't even need to take matrix powers. You're essentially good by just computing one number and one number will determine up to some fluctuations along the boundary will determine a kind of the number of paths of arbitrary lengths, which is really a ridiculously beautiful result. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.